Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated, coming to you live from our Lagos studios here in Nigeria. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwawo. On the show today, Tanzania's Central Bank approves merger of two state-owned banks. Vital, Glencore, Shell in running for Petrobras Nigerian assets. Plus, Morocco's trade deficit rises 12% year-on-year in January to April. Get the show started now with the markets and um, all the markets will track here in Africa. We're down at intraday. Looking at the numbers, the NSC index was down 0.37%. South Africa JSC index was down 0.83%. Egypt down 0.49%. Kenya, however, closed in the green up 1.57% on Wednesday. And in the Middle East, it was also a subdued day for most of the markets in the region. As at midday, only Saudi Arabia was trading in the green, up 0.78%. All the others, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and Qatar, were all in the red. And in Europe, markets edged higher in early trade as investors continued to monitor corporate earnings and political risk. Daniel Coop. My colleague in Frankfurt is standing by to tell us more. Hello, Daniel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Timmy, from Frankfurt, from uh, a trading floor where we're actually seeing uh, quite some uh, good earnings and also the blue chip index DAX here in the plus. Well, I guess you would have time to tell me more about that. Let's begin with politics. Italy's possibly new government is considering to ask the ECB for billions of debt relief. This has been moving the markets. What more can you tell us about this? And what do we know at this time? Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess those ideas and wishes from those two very populous and also very anti-EU parties, uh, that's at least what many investors here are telling me, uh, are considered as crazy, maybe even insane. Let me tell you that investors here are already uh, concerned about the fact what kind of consequences an Italian government led by two populist parties will mean for the country. It certainly won't be good for the image and it's the country that needs lots of reforms and investors are feeling that we could see a period without big reforms and also without big changes in Italy happening. Talking about the 250 billion euro debt relief, that's uh, what we are hearing, what, what was at least in their draft proposal of a coalition agreement that they want to ask the ECB to give them. Investors here are sure that something like that won't be even considered by the European Central Bank and many here are even asking what was on their mind when writing this down. Yes, Italy has lots of debt, but why should now other European countries uh, jump in and pay for this? We have to remember Italy might be uh, struggling, but it's still the fourth biggest economy here in Europe. Their uh, latest G GDP report was uh, with a plus of 0.3% exactly on the same level with Germany and also France. But let me tell you what is making investors worried if this is just going to be the beginning, uh, first of political chaos in Italy or the beginning of maybe another financial crisis uh, for the country. All right, let's look at currency. Today, the euro trimmed some of its earlier losses against the U.S. dollar. During the week, the currency went to the lowest point of 2018. Who is benefiting from this movement on the euro? Well, first, uh, let me tell you that this was happening yesterday, that uh, the euro was dropping that sharply. It was mostly uh, related to Italy, actually. Uh, this political uncertainty, a political possible term oil there is making, as I said, investors avoid. Yeah, it has recovered a little bit today. Uh, one euro is now at the level of about $1.18. Also, I have to tell you that yesterday and also throughout today that government bonds in Italy uh, were really down and uh, bank shares, uh, those were the ones uh, that were mostly suffering. 
Well, uh, European tourists now traveling to the United States, they won't like uh, this uh, very uh, strong dollar that we are seeing at the moment at all. Everything for them gets more expensive. Who is benefiting right now uh, are clearly uh, exporters here. Uh, as I told you uh, already uh, throughout our last conversations, uh, companies here listed, for example, in the blue chip index, that's the 30 big com biggest companies here, uh, financially speaking, for the European market, They all for the German market, they all heavily depend on export and for them it's actually better when the euro is not that strong. Okay, US and China resumed trade talks today as the world's biggest economies try to find common grounds in order to avoid a damaging global tariff war. Where do you see this heading to? Well, it always depends a little bit on the mood of the U.S. president. Some weeks ago, he was heavily uh, criticizing China. And now he's even helping to uh, step in uh, to uh, help uh, that not too many jobs uh, could be cut at, the, at a company called ZTE that was facing sanctions uh, from the United States of doing illegal uh, trade with North Korea and Iran. So uh, investors actually feel that right now that the mood of the U.S. president has calmed again a little bit down about this issue. He might be uh, too focused right now on Iran and also North Korea but we cannot forget one thing we are hearing also that big tech companies in the United States are trying to intervene as well uh, companies like Apple and Broadcom all of them earn a fifth of their revenues in China almost 30 US groups with market worth in excess of 1 billion US dollars each make at least 15 percent of their revenues in China their sales in the Middle Kingdom totals up to 80 billion US as dollars and two-thirds of them are chip or electronic uh, groups so this is uh, very important for them that the relationship with China is stable on the other hand he might also have received a call from big asset managers for example of GP Morgan and BlackRock those are the second and third largest holder uh, as I mentioned for example of the CTE uh, Hong Kong listed share company it seems that mr. Trump uh, yeah is uh, maybe rethinking a little bit at the moment investors are hoping uh, that at the end we won't see uh, you know big tariffs because at the end that's what every investor is telling me at the end nobody is really going to benefit with possible tariffs of course uh, China has produced when you talk for example about steel a uh, steel for dumping prices but when you compare the steel business in the United States with other industries that then you know could suffer uh, with higher tariffs automobile industry for example all of this is not really, uh, you know, into uh, to the, all of this you cannot really put into perspective. So a rational thinking would be very much appreciated. Let's see if U.S. President Donald Trump will be thinking rational or if maybe he is going to see in his favorite TV morning show on Fox News a comment that then is going to make him write another tweet and we might see chaos again. Let's see what's going to happen. It's, of course, uh, going to be interesting. We'll watch and see, Daniel. Thank you very much um, for your time. Well, we just have one more day to go. Right. And um, you'll be talking.